What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for the penultimate week, I believe as Dot Fanatic put it, uh, the penultimate week of the Pokemon Premier League. Um, for week 10, the Eternal City Enders are going up against the FC Evington, who are coached by Kino. Uh, if you have not seen his content, I will leave a link to his channel in the description. Very, very fun guy. Um, excellent battler to uh, last week he came off of a 5-0 victory against the Norwich Skitty. So if that's not indicative of being able to get a 5-0 against someone that good, I don't know what is. Now his overall record is 2-5, but uh, I, after watching some of the replays, I do think he would have more victories if not for a little bit of hacks there, uh, spread across things in different ways. Um, but looking at his team and the things he has access to, Latias, Azumarill, Cobalion, Entei, Amoongus, Thunderous, Swampert, Kadabra, Regirock, and Drapion. Uh, again, that's just a powerful team. I am happy to finally not face someone using all 11 of their slots as kind of a, an unnecessary hurdle to determine which of their 11 Pokemon they're bringing to a 6 Pokemon battle which I will have to remember for future drafts. But at the same token, uh, he doesn't have a Mega Pokemon. So that's a nice weight off of my mind. A lot of Mega Pokemon can become overwhelming just by weight of their base stat total. It's really high. On the other side, he does still have that versatility that you get when you don't have a Mega Pokemon. You can throw a lot more item choices around, um, a lot more set choices around. With no Mega, the Pokemon that you uh, end up using is likely less apparent, I would say. Based on the way he's been using his team so far, uh, things like Kadabra and Amoongus and Entei, uh, he's only really brought them a few times to, to, not Entei, Kadabra and Amoongus, excuse me. He only really brought them a few times to each battles. With something like Entei, that really accounts for the majority of his kills and it hasn't even died that much in his battles. Now with my team, there's a few ways I can go about handling his team. Um, overall, something like Entei is very threatening to my team. Uh, not only is the burn chance of Sacred Fire pretty annoying, but also gets extreme speed. So uh, something like Aqua Jet from Kabutops, if I need to pick it off, he can always pick off a weakened Kabutops first. Um, pair Entei up, with powerhouses like Latias and Azumarill and Thunderous T and you have this fantastic neutral coverage where he's basically able to hit every single one of my teammates with something really powerful. Uh, Latias of course has the ability to set up to uh, defog to get rid of my set up toxic spikes and it can just drop Dracos all day on my team except for on Florges basically. Uh, Florges is a pretty good Latias switch in but Florges doesn't necessarily want to take um, Psyshock, for example, if I, if I decide not to do the defensively invested one. And with that in mind, he might even use Psychic just because Psyshock is so popular. Now, I will say I am coming off of being pretty sick, so if my narration sounds a little bit more out of breath than usual, it's because of my asthma. Um, that also has impacted my uploads from last week. But anyways, though, uh, so Latias and... Um, Entei. Two things I think we'll definitely see during this battle. Now it's a little bit of a toss up from the other Pokemon. I believe that he's brought Entei to most, if not every single battle that he's had. Um, and I think we'll see it here just because of the good neutral coverage Entei gets. I have a few things that are decent relative checks to Entei, but they don't like getting burned. Like I can run a defensive Garchomp with Rocky Helmet to switch it on extreme speeds. Uh, I could also run Clefagrigus, doesn't care about extreme speed, but also doesn't really want to get burned. Um, and of course, Clefagrigus can't burn Entei back. So all this could be pretty annoying. Um, I do think we'll see Latias and Entei, and to a lesser extent, I also think we'll see um, either Swampert or Regirock. I don't think we'll see both. Uh, it looks like when he's used Swampert in the past, it was more of a um, defensive switch, like a defensive pivot. Uh, he just kind of basically used it as a wall to check some things. This is a little bit indicative of the idea that 
Swamp Bird and the Kill to Death ratio there is completely equal. And Red Rock and the Kill to Death ratio has a few more kills than Swamp Bird. Uh, they're just so bulky that they're difficult to take down. And so that's what will be actually forcing a little bit of my moves to change. For example, uh, if I decide to run um, Psy Shock on Reuticlus, Psy Shock doesn't hit the defensive side of Red Rock and Swamp Bird as hard as Psychic would. Now he could run Assault Vest, but I would love it if he ran Assault Vest because that means no Toxic, no um, Stealth Rocks coming in from him, no weird substitute shenanigans, anything like that. So if he decides to run his Assault Vest, I'd be quite pleased to see that. I don't think he will, but please, by all means, uh, Kida, definitely run Assault Vest Swamper. Um, now with some of these other Pokemon that are just interesting choices, the next threatening one really on his team is Thunderous Therian form. That's one of those Pokemon to me is, uh, I would I used to love running that Pokemon alongside Zoroark because Thunderous Therian just has such a wide move pool and he gets several different setup options. Uh, nasty Plot allows him to basically blow through my entire team if he gets up a Nasty Plot. Um, Thunderous's base speed is such that uh, he doesn't have too many issues outspeeding the slower members of my team with base 101 speed. Uh, that does mean that a max speed Garchomp will outspeed him, but it's pretty easy actually to just invest in Thunderous's bulk to make sure he can take a Rock Slide or a Stone Edge. That being said, I don't think he'll be investing in bulk here, really. Uh, another thing Thunderous Therian form can do is just set up an agility, in which case it can literally sweep my whole team uh, with the right coverage moves provided. Everything has a little bit of prior damage. That will be really annoying. I don't have any priority ice, really, to stop it, necessarily. Now, with Thunderous, um, I it is likely that he'll run both agility and nasty plot just so he can because between Thunderbolt and Hidden Power Ice uh, he can hit my whole team pretty well um, outside of Florges which would kind of wall an agility set like that but he can just wear down Florges beforehand and then Thunderbolt basically just needs to do around 30 to 40 percent uh, to Florges. Now this is where my lovely sand strategy comes back in um, because if I need to check something like that, if he is double dancing, he sets up an agility, that means he won't be able to hit Tyranitar very easily, which I don't think he'd do. I definitely think he'd bring Focus Blast in some regard. Similar to how I think he'll have Sludge Wave on his Thunderous to hit Forges, uh, or he can even use a physical move. Um, I like Iron Tail or something like that, I believe. But uh, I'm highly considering a Scarf Tyranitar for this matchup. It's kind of split. It's weird because it's between a Scarf Tyranitar and a really, really slow, very, very, very bulky one, similar to what I used in the first week. Uh, but Tyranitar gets really good neutral coverage against his team too, and it's another one of my secondary switches into Entei. Um, the reason I really like the idea of Tyranitar is mainly because of Tyranitar's fantastic neutral coverage against his team, similar to how he has that between a few of his Pokemon. Um, a Scarf set with for example, Dark Pulse alongside Earth Power, Stone Edge, and maybe Ice Beam or something like that, hits his whole team super effectively or neutrally, which is perfect. Pair that up with Stoutland to come in and pick off some threats uh, after kind of a pivot switch to something like Kofagrigus or Florges. That is a situation that I really want to put my team in. Um, another thing I can do here is bring my bulky uh, Toxicroak, excuse me, had a little bit of a brain lapse there. My bulky Toxicroak, outside of Thunderous running Psychic, which I don't think is very likely, I think he'd rather have that slot to hit um, some other teammates. Uh, and plus he has Kadabra if he really wants to run Psychic on something. Uh, Toxicroak can take a Thunderbolt or an HP Ice or a Focus Blast from Thunderous and either hit it back with a Sucker Punch, set up bulk ups, uh, if he tries to do a weird rain thing, of course, that to power up Azumarill's waterfall, then my Toxic Croak would love rain. So, I have that option there. I have a few options to, to really wall him out with some bulk. Plus, at the end of the day, I can always use Law Punny and use Fake Out, and that's going to out-prioritize him no matter what he uses as far as agility or Entei with Extreme Speed. 
The bad thing about Lop Honey in this matchup is just that he, uh, I've brought Lop Honey every single week, and this is a really important match. Uh, I imagine he's expecting me to bring Law Punny, which if I don't bring Law Punny, while that does kind of open me up to some things like Cobalion and uh, Red Rock and Drapion, um, I could just run something else and and not have to worry about that Mega Slot. Because there's just a high, uh, a really high chance that he'd bring a Moongus with the physical set. And that basically walls Law Punny until I get to plus two, then I can 2 KO it with Return. Um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting if I end up bringing Law Punny or not. Uh, definitely expect to see uh, a Zoomerul in some regard. I don't know if he'll bring a Belly Drum set just because it's hard for a Zoomerul to set up Belly Drum against my team. Uh, and that's another reason I'm considering what uh, my co coach said Aqua Contra with the Rocky Helmet Garchomp. Because even if he sets it up, I can bring in Garchomp and. He'll take a ton of recoil damage from even just touching Garchomp. Just from looking at Garchomp, he'll take a bunch of extra recoil. That'll make him relatively easy to pick off with something else. Uh, I don't necessarily want to put my Stalin in a position where it has to take a plus six Aqua Jet before um, it can hit him back. But that's something that can happen as well. Uh, Stalin actually doesn't need that much speed to outspeed his whole team in underneath Sandstorm. Uh, barring some scars or something like that. So I'll be keeping that in mind, and maybe I can throw some extra bulk onto Stoutland um, to really assist with that, because at the end of the day, Extreme Speed hits really, really hard, especially if he's banded. So I don't necessarily want Stoutland to take that type of damage if he's one of my win conditions. Uh, now with a few of my opponent's other Pokemon, such as Regirock and Drapion, he's only brought them a couple of times each, but they are, I'm very familiar with Drapion, he's one of my top three, four favorite Pokemon of all time easily, so I've played with it a lot, so I'm very familiar with the type of roles Drapion can fulfill. Drapion has actually a, a slightly above average base speed, especially for something tiered the way that it is, so I don't want him getting the drop on me and setting up Toxic Spikes or taunting me when I'm trying to do something. So on some of my Pokemon, I'm going to have to account for Drapion's uh, 95 base speed. Plus, Drapion's typing means it's only weak to ground. Very likely that he might throw an air balloon on there because he knows I have Garchomp, which would be annoying. Uh, and Drapion gets Stab knockoff, and that's just generally annoying for my team, too. Uh, I don't necessarily know if I want to run Toxic Spikes in this matchup because it's very likely that I bring Toxic Croak. But that's bit me in the butt personally before when I didn't decide to run Toxic Spikes against a team. And then my opponent didn't bring their poison type at all. Now I will say my opponent, besides, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, besides Kadabra, doesn't really have any good stab psychic attacks. And Kadabra is nothing to scoff at. I know that um, some of you guys may be confused as to why anyone would draft a Kadabra. But number one, it's a league-based format. Uh, Alakazam probably went really, really early on. Number two, Kadabra is still fast and has 120 base special attack. That's high, like that's that's above average easily. So that can hurt some things. Kadabra gets some interesting coverage options in the form of Psychic, Shadow Ball, it can use Energy Ball, it can use Signal Beam. Um, he can do something really weird and go for Encore, Substitute Shenanigans, any of that stuff will be annoying to face. Uh, I'm not as worried about Kadabra if I still have some priority in the back, whether it's Aqua Jet, or Sucker Punch, or Fake Out, but that doesn't mean that I want to take those powerful special hits. Um, plus Magic Guard, he could just run a, a Sash Kadabra, which is probably the most likely. A Sash Kadabra with life, uh, with with just a good amount of healthy coverage options. I don't know why I was going to say a Sash Kadabra with Life Orb. I'm going to assume I'm tired because you can't run two items, but oh what a world it would be if you could run two items on one Pokemon. Um, so yeah, so just to recap, I'm expecting him to bring Latias, Azumarill, Entei, Amoongus, Thunderous, either Swampert or Regirock, and uh, probably Drapion. Um, I don't think he'll bring Cobalion. Between Cobalion and Drapion, Cobalion just seems to kind of suffer against my team as a whole. Yes, Cobalion gets some interesting mixed options 
um, and it can also double dance similarly to the way that thunderous can with it can use rock polish or sword dance but uh just my my team kind of doesn't have as much issues with cobalion as it does with drapion um, so i think we'll see drapion hopefully my voice will be at 100 percent by the time i'm narrating that battle i'm a whole week behind sorry to kino and the ppl for mixing up the time zones otherwise kino and i would have already battled and this is it let me again emphasize how important this match is depending on who wins this match and how the match is won um, that forces some teams into relegation that means other teams will either have a shot at least at relegation um, we are in the slot number seven overall so uh, it's important that I, at the very least, if I'm going to lose, which I, I, I'm going to try my darndest not to lose. If I'm going to lose, I need to basically keep it at like, it needs to be a 1-0. It needs to be the closest battle that I've had in this league, basically. So we're definitely going to roll forward with that momentum from last week where we picked off another win from the Parasect Germain, who are still in place one on the league table. Uh, and also, it will be nice to see Stoutland rise up into those MVP ranks. He's number fifth overall right now, just because of how many kills he has versus deaths. So if I can get another sweep going on with him, then he'll easily be number one in the uh, in the MVP race. So there are two chances, of course, for that between this week and next week. But I'm really excited about the last few battles. Uh, everything's kind of on the line. Have a chance here to make it into playoffs if I could just keep pushing so guys i hope you enjoy the upload when it drops um, and i hope you guys are having a good start to the week don't get a case of the mondays or anything like that and uh, we'll talk to you next time have a great week guys bye